Hello gardeners, how are you guys doing today? If you are new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. We take that science and we apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join this awesome crew. Before we get into the pressing stuff of this video, which essentially is all my tomato fails this year so far, but a learning opportunity for you, let's just admire how beautiful my wave petunia container is. It's super, super pretty. It's huge, like holy moly. And let's also just admire how well my water lettuce is doing, which is like, ooh, that right there. It's huge. I bought it when I was like, literally this big and it's just it's gotten ginormous so uh let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video i'm going to show you two things in this video and uh, both of them have to do with tomatoes and common issues that you may see in your tomato garden the first one being what it looks like when your tomato plants are waterlogged or stressed out in some way and the second being what it looks like when you have over fertilization damage and then i'm going to show you what a healthy tomato looks like so let's get into it so as you guys know i was doing a or i am doing an experiment on tomatoes and exactly what environment they grow in best so i'm doing a control plot a conventionally fertilized plot an organically fertilized plot and then a kind of hack plot due to my hack series and I'm still continuing with exactly what hacks you apply to make the hacks valid so that's like eggshells tums things like that so I'm gonna continue with that but I just want to show you what's going on because we're experiencing some things and those things include what I would probably assume is root rot if not root rot some sort of root inhibition and it's probably due to lack of soil porosity and most likely um, just lack of airflow and proper balance between the soil air nutrient and soil particles if you watch anything about the soil series and soil structure you'll know exactly what i'm talking about but let's just look at what it looks like when your plant is going through some issues with breathing essentially and what it will appear like on the tomato leaves so this garden here is the hack garden and let's just take time to look at exactly what's happening and i think this is because of the banana peels and just the lack of water air soil mixture that is happening so you can see on my plant i'm getting kind of this weird cupping look oh that is not going to focus so yeah it's like this weird cupping see that so that is actually due to a waterlog scenario or it's not getting enough air something's happening with the root system so this is not a nutrient deficiency this is not bugs this is solely due to something with the roots so i'm thinking they're just simply they're swamped and they're just not getting enough room to breathe and enjoy life so that's probably what's happening as you can see these leaves down here are fine and these were the ones when the plant was initially planted a little bit after the plant was planted but now that the soil the tomato the bananas are starting to rot the coffee grounds are starting to settle in and get water in them it's getting logged so it is causing some issues with the leaves and that's exactly what's happening this also would be caused by overwatering, uh, for example, or just a heavy clay soil would also cause this. Not just banana peels, but that is a great example is the banana peels. So you're welcome for doing that experiment for you. In Canada, it doesn't work so well. The soil is not very hot here, um, especially in zone three. We have had rain, so much rain, and it's been so freaking cold. It's unbelievable and I think it just compounded and caused issues um, the other thing that I think is happening in this garden is I have too much nitrogen oddly enough I never thought that would happen but I did add manure and compost to this in the frequency or the amount that is recommended online by some of these 
hippie garden homestead people, which is just, there's no way that they're adding this much of this stuff in there. And it's caused some other issues. So those issues would be this. <laughs> so you see the amount of space between these nodes. That's huge, right? And so that's not normal. I'll show you what normal looks like, but this is not normal. And this uh, is an indication that I have too much nitrogen or the other thing it could be, we don't always have to blame it on, on the soil. It could be lack of sun, which I know sounds crazy, but with the amount of rain we've had, the amount of clouds, like even just look at the sky right now, cloudy again, surprise. Um, yeah, so that, that definitely could be the issue. So let's go look at the other issue. So you can thank me later on this, but um, essentially what I did here <laughs> is I messed up my labeling in the beginning phases of germination and planting. You're welcome. And so that caused me to plant beefsteak tomatoes in a hanging basket. And you can guess exactly how that went. Not good. I knew the plant wasn't going to survive and I thought, you know what? Screw it. I can't transplant it. It's too late in the year. It's not going to do well. So I'm just going to damage this plant to the point that it can't. It, it'll live but I just want to want to show you guys exactly what it looks like when you over fertilize because a lot of questions I get asked is what does over fertilization look like have I over fertilized and what signs and symptoms will it show and what I'm about to show you will show up on any plant house plant garden plant flower regardless if you have this it is too much fertilizer it is not not enough it is too much fertilizer so let's look so as you can see here i have my yeah that's that's beef steak that's definitely freaking that's beef steak tomatoes there but here i over fertilize this to show you guys exactly what it looks like so let's just zoom in you can see just these edges are crispy here that's exactly what happens but the new foliage which is way up here it's totally fine. And the reason for that is because fertilizer is water soluble. If you watch my NPK lesson video, you're gonna know that a lot of the fertilizer, regardless of if it's organic or inorganic, gets washed through the profile with water and rain. But what I did to over fertilize this is I actually took a whole bottle of liquid fertilizer and I filled up the whole cap and I just poured it directly on the stem so you can see I burnt the stem too. So I just wanted to show you guys exactly what happens if you over fertilize. So to ensure over fertilization, I literally dumped an entire cap of fertilizer on this, didn't mix it with water and I left it. I didn't even water it after because if you know from other videos, if you over fertilize and you add water, you will no longer have the fertilizer burn. You just wash it all the system. You'll be good to go. But yeah, so I burnt these and this is what it looks like when you over fertilize. You're going to get this. Oh, that's a wonderful sound, isn't it? So yeah, that's exactly what happens on the leaves. On the stem, what you're going to get is you get this brown kind of look. And that's what it's going to look like on the stem. And it's going to start with the older growth and it is not going to show up on the newer growth. And it starts off kind of like a purpley color, but eventually it uh, wanes off. But good news is, if it's not beefsteak and it is cherry tomatoes, they do very well in the hanging baskets like I said they would. So let's go look at what exactly good healthy tomatoes look like. This plot here is one. So I have regular fertilizer in there. I'm using miracle Grow. I also put slow release underneath while I was planting. Then on this side, I have my conventional, which is just nothing. I haven't put anything in it. I just water it the same and prune it the same as the other plots. But other than that, that is all that is happening here. So let's take a closer look at what the leaves look like, what healthy leaves should look like, and kind of what regular development looks like. Okay, so we are here at the conventional side. I am, I gotta lot, stop looking through the viewfinder and start just looking at the actual leaf. So this is just a normal healthy tomato plant that is pruned the same way I did in my videos and everyone is happy and healthy. I could prune a little more. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but we just had like five days of rain and now we're having a heat burst. Oh, look at that beefsteak. Oh yeah, he's 
said, oh yeah, I got some more over there. And then I know I have some more over here. So some of these stake I staked, some of these I did not stake. And uh, that's due to laziness mostly. But this is what a healthy tomato leaf looks like. They are relatively um, thick. You have a thicker type texture to them. Um, they kind of cup up a little bit, but that's normal. That's a normal tomato plant way of living. Um, and my color is a deep, deep green. So these are healthy, these are happy, and this is in the conventional one with no fertilizer. So let's go look at the one that has been conventionally fertilized. So on this side, we have the conventional, and you can see we are, you know, we're slightly d deeper green on this side, which is normal. When you start using conventional fertilizer, you're going to get this deeper green look. Even when you just compare it, the right there, this plant here is the end of the conventional and then your uh, control begins. So you can see it's a little bit lighter green, but these aren't unhealthy. These are still very healthy plants. And now I'm not saying that conventional is more or less healthy than um, organic. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just, we had some whoopsies with the organic. So yeah, this guy, this curling, once you start getting to these upper layers, see this this is normal um, that's to be expected when you have this much heat or this much sunshine they'll start to fold down and yeah so yeah everyone's good but I will note the conventional we don't have as many tomatoes ready to go we don't have any big beef steaks over here the conventional is doing much better than all the other ones so let's have a laugh here this is the tomato, the cherry tomato that was meant to make it into my hanging pot. Isn't that wonderful? He's with my beef steaks. He's just chilling. He's just chilling. Making lots of flowers, but he's just chilling. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. I can't, I literally can't believe I did that. I don't know. The excitement of starting a YouTube channel, I guess but he's going to live his life out in here so I can get some cherry tomatoes off of him, but I'm not gonna prune him. And uh, yeah, the reason I'm not gonna prune him is because Scylla at Learn to Grow actually said, do not prune your cherry tomatoes. You will be blown away by the yield you'll get. So I decided, okay, I won't we'll let her run. And uh, I have the space. I don't have the heavy weight of the hanging basket to worry about. So yeah, we're gonna do it that way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you are enjoying my gardening blunders, such as the corn video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Give me, send me some positive vibes in the comments to make me feel slightly better about my mishaps. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.